So today we're going to look at how we can compute forces in e-motors. So let's get started. So to give you an overview, uh, we have electromagnetic forces happening in the motors, especially in the air gap. And these forces are often cause of acoustic noise and vibration. So these forces would be like pulling the teeth at a certain frequency, as we can see here in the animation. And these radial forces especially will create some noise when the vibration is transmitted to the housing. So that's something we want to avoid, and we want to be able to compute it at an um, electromagnetic level. Uh, on the other hand, there's also torque ripple, which can be an issue. Uh, this would be more because on the shaft and maybe to the gears and assembly. But today we'll focus mostly on the, the radial part of forces in e-motors. And actually, in flux in general, there are three ways to compute forces. So let's review them quickly. The first method is going to be a global method. Uh, this can be applied on any magnetic part surrounded by air region. And the easiest way to, to use it is through a sensor. So you can see an example here. We can create a sensor of magnetic force and select specific regions. So here we selected all the rotor regions. And that would be how, for example, we can compute forces on the entire rotor in an eccentricity case. It met, this method is using the virtual works method. So that's also the same method we use when we compute the torque on the entire uh, electric machine. The second method we can use is more of a local force computation. Uh, this one is using what we call the density of surface force or density of uh, magnetic pressure. And this one can be computed on the borders of magnetic region. Uh, so the quantity called DF mag S is the one to use. And we can also integrate this one easily using sensors. Uh, but be careful, this one is only valid uh, as a normal component to the border. So it cannot be used to compute tangential forces, for example. And here you can see an example how to create a sensor, uh, selecting these two lines and selecting the df mag s quantity. Uh, here we use a specific formula to convert it into uh, the first component in uh, the cylindrical coordinate system. So you can use this type of formula uh, in order to create that. I think there's also a sensor, uh, a macro, sorry, to create this sensor if you need to create them uh, quickly. But finally, maybe the best way to compute local forces, and especially when it comes to forces to NVH, is using the Maxwell stress tensor. Uh, so you could write this formula by yourself, but don't, don't worry, we can uh, do this automatically. Uh, these formula are based on the radial and tangential component of B in the air gap. And this method, it needs to be applied slightly away from the magnetic material inside of the air gap. In order to use this method, this third method, we need to use the import-export context. Let's have a look what this is. Uh, so it's basically a place where you can do these four steps in order to extract forces from the flux model. The first step is a definition of data support, which means it's a practical mesh on which you want to do the computation. So it can be either the flux mesh or an external mesh that you import. Then we're going to define a force collection or derived data collection. So I will come back to this in a minute. We can visualize the forces we compute inside of flux, and then we can export them to OptiStruct in order to have an excitation into the structural model. So there's four types of force collection. So I put a little picture to illustrate them. We have the two first methods, which are like projective methods, which we use a lot in electric machines. And then we have the DF mag S method is also available from here on the surface level. And you can also export volume forces. If you have uh, solid conductors or bars, then you also have a method here to export forces, volume forces, uh, volume density of forces, actually, uh, that can be also forces on nodes that can be exported from this, uh, this context. But if we focus on the two first method, so the, the idea is that you will create a data support. So that can be the tooth tips of your stator housing, the stator teeth. Uh, this will be like a cylindrical shape. And with the simplified projective method, Flux will create a virtual cylinder on which is doing the maximum pressure integral. And then it will map these forces onto the external mesh that you have imported. And typically, the same is done in generalized projective method, except this time we don't use a given cylinder created by Flux, but uh, the user has to create a specific support, like a grid in this case, on which to do the computation. 
and then still the forces uh, mapped and projected onto the, the support to export the mesh. <clears throat> Once you've done your computations, then two things can be done. First thing is to visualize the result, as I said. So whether you, ex you compute the current force or you can compute the harmonic of the force. <clears throat> and you can also display either nodal force on each node of the data support, or you can compute global forces, which would be like one arrow per tooth. And if you're happy with your forces, you can export them in the right format for OptiStruct. So whether it's a static, transient, or FFT force file, uh, in case of NVH, we'll mostly use FFT. Uh, and then we also have the choice here to export local forces or global forces. So global forces will be just one force per tooth, which makes the file a bit lighter. Uh, so it reduces the complexity of the OptiStruct file, uh, but it creates a rigid body on the tooth surface. So it can be uh, limiting sometimes, but it's probably the easiest and lightest option to, to use. <clears throat> so let's have a look at a quick demo, how we can apply this on the motor. So here we have a, an IPM motor, and we're going to open this import export context from the data exchange menu. So when you open it, you have a choice of which type you want to offer. So it's more like a filter when you open the context. So let's choose mechanical. And from here, you see we switch from a 2D view to a, like a 3D view, where all the 2D results can be mapped onto 3D. So the first step is to create this data support, which is already there. So here we have imported the FEM file, which is the mesh of the stator tooth tips. And you can see this is exactly well positioned to match the tooth tips of the 2D model and on the Z equals zero position. Once we have this data support, we can create a force collection. So here we use the simplified method for a cylinder projection, but you can see we have access to the other type of method. And Flux will evaluate automatically the right uh, cylinder for that. On top of this force collection, we can create an FFT collection. So that will just reuse the first collection on a given interval. And it's also able to duplicate the force as if you have solved the Flux model for an entire rotation. Then you can collect the data and you are able to visualize the forces you have computed. So here we have an example. We are going to display forces. Uh, global forces with only the radial component. So here you see what it looks like. Uh, these are the global forces at a specific time step. Display one force per tooth. So we can visualize at each time step. And of course, if you want to see the evolution of this force versus time, then we have a specific uh, curve option. So here you can go create a standard data evolution curve. We can choose which tooth we want to select. So let's say this one, select the interval for the curve, and then we'll have the curve with the radial and tangential components uh, versus time. OK. And now we can do the same thing, but for a harmonic display. So we can display the, the given harmonic of the force because we've done an FFT. So this time, we'll compute a nodal uh, display. So we'll have one force per mechanical node. And we see because it's a harmonic, we can display the variation of this harmonic. So this is the second harmonic. I'm not sure if it's the best one to display, but this is a, to show you the example. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to see the complete harmonic content of one force, we can select one of the nodes and export uh, the FFT or plot the FFT curve of this particular uh, node force. So here we choose the maximum number of harmonic, 64. And there we have the FFT component of that particular nodal uh, force. So that's with the excitation that will be sent to OptiStruct. And speaking of OptiStruct, then we can do the next step, which is exporting. So all of the forces here we have computed, we can do a data export. Here we choose the frequency export. And we, here we have the choice, as I said, forces at nodes or global forces. And we can export that file to OptiStruct. So that was a quick demo of what we can do uh, to prepare forces, compute them, and how we can export them. But uh, all of this is within uh, Alter Flux. So what about the other Alter tools? So the first tool I want to mention is Flux Motor. So obviously, from Flux Motor, we're running Flux 2D simulation quite a lot. And in the NVH test, you can actually also get the force computed, as you can see on the bottom left. 
uh, we have the forces on tooth that can be displayed when you do a single working point in the edge computations. And these forces are then used combined with an analytical model analysis to give you a, an estimate of the NVH uh, of the machine, uh, of the noise produced by the machine. Uh, and of course, you can also do uh, the complete range of speed with the spectrogram analysis in the same place. And this can be done in a very quick way and short time. And then second tool I want to mention is, of course, SimLab, as we are transitioning from Flux to SimLab. Then all of the workflow I've shown you is inside the import-export context. But you may know already from the SimLab environment, we can prepare our 2D magnetic transient solution. Uh, we can also prepare in the same model the 3D structural model with the housing and all the uh, like power sensor, sound receiver uh, for the emotor acoustic. And actually, if you want to go from one to the other, there's just a one-click method where you can include the magnetic load excitation from the magnetic to the structural. And uh, the steps that we've done in the import-export context can be done in one click automatically. You still have the choice for one node per tooth or nodal uh, forces. And then automatically, it will create the loads applied to your structural model to, to be solved in optic extract. So as a conclusion of all of these computation forces, we've seen that uh, we can create simple sensors to give you quick results, whether it's on a local, on one tooth, or on the entire rotor uh, shape for eccentricities. We've seen quickly a flux motor can also do this force computation and quick NVH as well. Uh, but of course, if you want to have control on what you're doing, the import-export context is where everything happens. So you have the control on the mesh, on the type of quantity, and so on, and plots. Uh, but if you are focused on the NVH part, then you can do everything we've seen from the SimLab interface uh, just in one click. So hopefully, you have your the solution that suits you the best, and you know how to, to compute the forces that uh, are interesting for you. Thank you.